Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Linda Lang. Hi, this is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com. We are exploring the mystical side of life once again today. If you enjoy our conversations, please make sure you subscribe, share it with a friend. Today, I have healer and intuitive guide, Celine O'Donovan with me. Welcome, Celine. Thank you, Linda. Delighted to be on your show. You know, a lot of people on their spiritual path, they have some type of trauma or some health situation that really catapults them on their spiritual path. That's what happened with you, right? Yes. Can you share a little bit about your story and how that helped awaken you? Sure. It's six years ago, nearly seven, since I was diagnosed with breast cancer in February 2016. But to give a little flavor of what my life was like before, because I feel now I was getting many warning signs before the diagnosis, which I didn't fully understand then, but I do now. Life wasn't so um, good, let's say, in many ways. On, On the surface, I looked to have it all in one way. I was working in a university. I had a good career. I had my own home. Now, I had had some trauma earlier in my life. I had a very difficult marriage breakup in 2002. We're soulmates, though, and very connected still, but it it did send me spiraling downwards. Added to that, I was quite a sensitive child. I was quite empathic. I used to feel a lot. I used to hear a lot, but I shut it down as we try to do to fit into our systems. But again, I didn't know any different then. I looked on the surface to be, you know, I was a good actor and I kept it all going. But I have to say, I didn't really feel like I fitted in. I felt a constant low level anxiety is the only way to describe it. And in the couple of years prior to my diagnosis, I had a car accident the year before. I was feeling very burnt out. I was feeling very strung out. I was feeling, is this the life I came here to live sitting in traffic? My job wasn't fulfilling me in the same way anymore felt like I was running on fumes almost I couldn't think everything was just it was almost like something I flipped a switch or something in my brain but I didn't know what to do other than go back so I did because our system doesn't necessarily cater for you saying sorry I'm out of here now I'm doing something else so I went back and that was my journey there's no issue with that that's what had to happen And it was maybe six, eight months later, still feeling very burnt out, managed to go back to my job. I did go to a conference in the UK just before my diagnosis. I had found some sort of a lump, but I pushed it to one side thinking it's not important. I actually went to see a psychic at the time, which I often did to support me because I was so lost. And as I was leaving, she pointed to the right hand side. And she mentioned something, but she said, I can't really help, you know, with that now. I assumed it was something emotional, which it was, I suppose, ultimately. So I left and went to the UK to the conference and I was overwhelmed with panic and I didn't know what was wrong with me. I just knew this isn't for me. I just knew I wasn't meant to be there. And I came home and then I ended up a few weeks later going to the doctor. And then uh, it started with being sent to what we call the breast check clinic here in Ireland within an hour got the news you've breast cancer I'll never forget the words and I say them in the start of my book the consultant has said you have breast cancer you need surgery radiotherapy chemotherapy it'll be a year out of your life and I now realize it was the year I started living Um, might sound strange to others and it was the first time my life made sense once I got over the shock I just realized, so everything I was feeling, I wasn't going crazy. Everything is connected. You know, I knew something deeper was going on, but I couldn't find it in my world. And I couldn't seem to find anyone who could explain it to me. It's amazing, really, how we do sense, right? We do sense when something is off or hear those little urges, those little whisperings that there's something else 
And it's so easy. It's just so easy to kind of brush it to the side, right? I'm not saying everyone has to come out of the system, but it was my path to go on this journey as a healer, you know, a guide or a writer. It feels so natural to me now. But as we know, our world or our world as it was or as it is, hasn't necessarily encouraged us to go and find that within ourselves and to believe that you could have a life, you know, where you're really stepping into those. Even after I re recovered, let's say, or went through the treatment, I knew I couldn't go back. And it was the most stressful time of, of my life because I had been held my life going through the treatment. I was held, I was supported, I could stop, I could relax. My anxiety stopped. I felt just so at peace, so at one with nature, with the universe, with God, everything. But once I started to come back to myself, pretty much everyone was saying, so are you going back to work? And I used to look at them like they were crazy going, how can I go back? <laughs> you can't go back. It nearly killed me. And it's not a criticism. It's just people can't understand it. If your life is going along okay for you and maybe you're living the life that you were meant to live but I wasn't any longer living the life that I was meant to live so I have no doubt I would be dead or I would soon be dead if I went back. So it was a life awakening and a spiritual awakening for you. Yeah. And I know for myself so many gifts in those you know really difficult experiences it's kind of like the path opens and you get to choose, right? One way or the other way. And I'm curious what kind of gifts you discovered on your path. Oh my gosh, so much. Um, I suppose the, the most important one, and it still is the most important one, is spiritual connection to my source, to God. Coming back into, I suppose, the fullness of, of who I am and you know, I, I say to people that when I first was diagnosed and went into treatment, I was living alone. And the best way I could describe it, it was like I surrendered, I suppose. You know, I had been fighting and pushing and trying all my life to do the right thing. And I just took my hands off. It was like taking my hands off the steering wheel and going, OK, I can't do it anymore. You take over. And something broke open in me. Oh, like it shivers when I say that. But I literally felt this opening up and letting go of all that resistance and holding on and just something beautiful started to just grow and blossom in my life and that's where everything has come from you know coming back into the truth of who I am that creative source God whatever you want to call it the truth of who you are the core of who you are and from there has come wonderful creativity you know, I wrote a book I never thought I could write. Um, a sense of flow. I feel a great sense of flow in my life as long as I'm not resisting, which I still do because you're human. I'm human. Yeah. And I looked, I was looking at your website there and I just realized I, I trained as a life coach to help me really with the tools. And I could see, you know, and it's come up again recently, all this old programming and belief and conditioning. And I really see it as a it's a process now of undoing as opposed to trying to get anywhere. It's peeling back the layers of everything I'm not. And that has been quite a, a relief nearly to understand it that way, because I spent my life trying to get somewhere and do and do. And now it's no, I'm coming back into being and letting all of that go, which is a process. And I've done a lot of work and we're living in strange times and you know, there's been a lot of what I call purging nearly and clearing in the last few years, personally, which is great. The peace, the creativity, the joy, the passion, a sense of purpose, meaning to my life, community, you people have showed up. I had to let others go. And it's allowing, you know, isn't it? It's just allowing life to sort of work through me. I love the perspective of the unpeeling and I totally agree because when we come into this world, we have, you know, our own personality. We are hardwired for our life purpose, our talents, our skills, our interests, and somewhere along the way, you know, things get shut down or 
we take left turns and we can get off track. But the good news is it's still always inside us. Like, right, it's in our core. We just, like you say, need to unpeel some of those layers so we have clear access and knowing. And that's still ongoing, you know, and I think I never, you know, I I don't judge myself. You know, I feel as we, everything we go through, there's a beautiful book by Wayne Dyer called I Can See Clearly Now. I think it's beautiful because it shows how everything I can see now, everything I experience, I had to experience to be who I am today. And I wouldn't change a moment of it. I've said it to people. I wouldn't change one moment of cancer and that diagnosis. If you gave me a choice to go back and live the life I lived a year before cancer or the year of cancer, I would always pick the year of cancer because it was when the magic started to happen and, you know, life started to make sense to me. Yeah, it's hard for people to kind of wrap their mind around that, but the gifts are so deep and they're so life changing or can be for some people, I would say. You said that life happens through you, which is another beautiful concept that, you know, really we're just here for the experience and it doesn't matter what you're doing or where you are, you are experiencing the gift of life in some form, right? In some form. We all want those amazing gifts and we want to, you know, awaken to who we truly are, to deepen our connection. And yet I always say to people, you know, I wouldn't change my experience for the world, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on anyone else because it's a tough go, right? Do you have any suggestions or any tips for the listeners to really help them start to tune in? to that core self so that they can avoid these kind of, you know, challenges that really shake you to your root. And I don't believe everybody has to experience cancer or something catastrophic. In fact, that's why I'm drawn to do the work I do to hopefully support people before they get to that place. I do believe, though, there has to be something within you that chooses or senses that they're looking for more or if if you're going along and I meet many people who are and seem quite happy in their existence I'm not going to take them and shake them and say you know you should be looking for more meaning or something greater but I think there is a point where I was a couple of years before and I probably talked to a lot of people about it I'm a big believer now even as I do more of the energy work and I was reading a beautiful book the other day The Hands of Light by Barbara Ann Brennan an older book but I just was going back to it and she was talking about the body and discomfort and how we tune into the truth or our guidance and it starts with discomfort any physical emotional anything that is uncomfortable has something to say to you so I think the first thing is really about sort of assessing where you are like is there something that's gnawing away at you do you feel stuck are you anxious are you unhappy in your job so there has to be something that is sort of a little spark of I'm ready to choose something different because we all know don't we nobody can do this work even when I was training as a coach it was all about all you're doing is facilitating and supporting someone here everyone has to go on their own journey um ask for help like put it out to the universe there are days that I just don't know and I just remember connect in and I ask for help and I say please show me I'm just really at a loss here what to do next because I, I I've seen it in my own life we're always shown the next step always shown the next step I'm sure you'd say the same but there's no guarantees down the road life doesn't work like that I climbed a mountain in Ireland last week, Crow Patrick, a beautiful spiritual, I hadn't climbed it in years, beautiful spiritual place. It brought back all of these messages to me again because I found it overwhelming. I thought it was insurmountable. And I literally had to say to myself, come in back into the moment. All you have is now. What is the next step that you're going to take? You know, that is how life, I suppose, unfolds is a step at a time. So I'd encourage people to ask and get out in nature as well has been a very great you know um, unplugging from the stresses in my life and nature has been a huge teacher for me there's just just so many different things 
And creativity was a great way. So even starting to try and tap into what gives you joy, you know, when are the moments? Because they're the little breadcrumbs. I call them the breadcrumb trail. Where are you feeling most joyful, most at peace? You know, that you can sort of maybe start there. Yeah, what sort of thoughts do you have from your perspective of your own um, experiences down through the years? Uh, With regards to creativity, I totally agree. When you're in that place, it's like no time, right? When you're in that creative space where creativity comes through you. But even if you don't think that you're a creative person, music can do that for you without you having to create music, just being with music. I agree with uh, nature as well. It's a powerful healer and it helps us to have our feet firmly here on the earth in this dimension where we're having this experience. And the goal is to bring the spiritual energy down into this plane, not to transcend this plane and, and leave for higher dimensions because then why even come here? You said so many beautiful things in there. And I agree that people don't need to have a cancer or health scare or something that is that catastrophic in our life. But we do all have challenges. And when we can plug into, whether you want to call that plugging into source or your spiritual connection or that deep knowingness within yourself, because I think they're the same thing. They're just expressed differently. I mean, you can weather those storms better, right? You have more self-trust and more flexibility and more willingness to allow. I love that you said you surrendered. That's the first thing I did. And it doesn't make sense to a lot of people because a lot of people think, you know, you got to set your intention and you got to, you know, almost force your goal. That's not how it was for me, though. Not for you either it sounds no and maybe for a certain amount of time it will work but I think we all reach a point and only each of us can know when we're reaching that point because I've had people reach out to me so I feel the more I can talk and share my story that someone who's ready so a, a lady contacted me a few weeks back we've yet to meet but she heard me on the radio and she's feeling quite stuck so something in my story gave her hope And, you know, I think part of it is hopefully that that may trigger something in someone to go, I'm not going crazy. Yes, maybe I need to to do something here. A big shift for me, and it's a big message in my book, is this shift in perspective of how we look at our life. And I now genuinely look at everything as happening for me, not to me. And I think the shift has to happen in us. It's a choice. Am I going to stay as a victim of life? Or am I going to step into, and it's not easy, it takes courage. I genuinely know that I chose to create a higher aspect of me, chose to create this illness because it's just been as difficult as it has been. It has taught me so much and I don't believe I could have. But I would say to listeners, no matter what you're going through, if you could just ask yourself the question, even just put it out there, what if this is happening for me? You know, it shifts everything. What if this is happening to help me get into my purpose, to get me on my path so that I can share my gift and why I am here with the world? And once you ask that question, even putting that out there, doesn't it? It changes the energy of what you'll be surprised at what comes to you. I do believe that why many people maybe find it challenging to maybe choose this is and I think you talk about it as well on your on your website as well. As part of that of undoing, we have to do a lot of work releasing a lot of the old energies and emotions and traumas that are just part and parcel of being a human being. Because I don't think I could be where I am, but there was so much stuck and blocked in me that I couldn't connect with who I really was. It's like the peeling back again, isn't it? I think we can change like in an instant, we can make that decision and and have it gone. It's just that it takes us so long to actually decide to release, you know, all the attachments and the old stories because we've identified with them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think that it's true, you know, as you share your story, it's kind of a call out to the souls you're here to help. I, for a long time, I didn't share my story. And one day my guides just popped in and said, you know, a story is just a story until you share it. Then it becomes a teaching or a healing or a connection for other people. There's something for others in your experience. And perhaps that's why so many of the good storytellers and the ancient peoples taught through story because it's a metaphor that kind of gets into the unconscious and opens to new perspectives, really. Yeah, that's beautiful. And someone said that to me once, actually, a healer I was working with, he said, you know, that is what you're here to do is you went through what you went through. But by sharing your story, you can help others understand their own and move through whatever. You know, I used to believe, oh, I have to have an answer for everyone. But, you know, we don't, you know, it's not every, we have to find our own answers. We already have, right? We already have our own answers. Yeah, exactly. And that's all. It, it's pointing someone. I, I've heard someone talk about it, a beautiful spiritual teacher. You're not even telling people or directing them. You're just pointing them to a place you know, that you found in yourself so that they can then, you know, know the steps to take. I can't tell anyone and nobody could tell me what it was like to go through cancer or through anything, but they can encourage and support me and just remind me that I have, you know, everything I need. For the listeners that have challenging stories in their past, it's how you choose to share it that's important, the energy. So you can choose to share the trauma, you know, the pain, the challenge with an attachment to those things, or you can choose to share the experience through the gift and the gratitude for your life and for what you learn from it. Those are two very different energies, right? And remember, your thoughts and your energy is what attracts new experiences. Exactly. I thought my book was going to be published a couple of years ago and, you know, just different things happened. It was all divinely orchestrated, but I can see now exactly as you said, it's because I needed to be in a different place with this because I genuinely do feel the joy and I'm not trying to diminish or minimize anything challenging because it was devastating. And that's why I called my book that, like it was extremely devastating. And sometimes I'll have moments where I'll cry for that person and feel oh my God, you had to go through so much pain. Like it was so hard. But, you know, that's sort of bittersweet. But at the same time, that that is part of it. But now coming through the other side and genuinely feeling the joy, I think it's just like seeing what's on the other side. You know, if I had met someone good up the mountain who was coming down crying and it's awful and oh my God, I'm battered and bruised. I'd have just gone, I'm not going. But we saw the joy having got over the challenge of that climb and it was a difficult climb but to see the joy in their faces kept me going okay that's possible for me and it's a message of hope isn't it and like you said holding on to the attachment to all of that I did for that for years I think it's so important really right because you get those people who are really attached to their pain and their victimhood and they're sharing that and creating more and more victimhood and I think probably the most important message is learning to listen because your soul, your body, your energy system will be giving you messages when things are out of alignment. It's been such a joy having you here today. Celine, would you like to share your book for the listeners and your website? Okay, thank you. Yes, um, Linda, so my book is called, I'll just fold it up for anyone who may be watching, it's Gifts from the Devastation, What Cancer Taught Me About Life. And I picked just in the in the spirit of what we were talking about, very uplifting colours and imagery, because I wanted it to be a very hopeful message. And as you can see, the title probably straddles both the devastation, but also, you know, what's on the other side of the devastation that's there for everyone. So, yeah, that's the book. It's available. Amazon, Book Depository, all of the usual. I also, just to say to people, I recorded and narrated an audiobook version of it. Um, some people preferred that. It was a further healing for me because two years later, I sit down and I record and speak it all again. So it brought me into a deep 
understanding and healing, which was beautiful. All is available on my website, which is www.celineodonovan.com. So I'll just spell that for anyone who's listening. It's C-E-L-I-N-E-O-D-O-N-O-V-A-N.com. Thank you again for being my guest. And thank you for listening to this week's edition of Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. You will find all of our conversations on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio. Come visit me at ThoughtChange.com to learn what energy medicine can do for you, help you clear out some of that old baggage, and pick up your copy of Learning to Listen, because that's really the start. That's really the start. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.